Hi everyone. The last lecture I did for you all explained the best strategies for tracking down primary research articles referred to in media pieces. This lecture will go over research strategies that will help with finding scholarly journal articles on a topic of your choosing. In order to do this, we will use a sample research topic that is based on the yoga example used in the previous lecture. The first step in the research process is always going to be coming up with something to research. This typically starts by identifying a topic that you are interested in learning more about. This can be done for you by way of assignment for a specific class, it can be something that you were just interested in, or it can be based on what is often referred to as an instancing source, like in this case where I've developed a research question related to the content of the article about yoga's benefit to cancer patients, which was discussed in the previous lecture. Your research question, or thesis statement, will be a way of strategically organizing the key concepts of your topic. Once you have your research question, you will be able to extract these concepts which will make up the foundation for forming your key words. One of the hardest parts of searching for information is coming up with the best words to describe what you are looking for. This is why brainstorming and coming up with different search strategies is so important. But there are some methods for creating searches that can help. First, obviously you will want to pull out the key concepts of your research question or thesis statement. Here, for example, yoga, cancer, and benefits are the top-level concepts. However, there is never one perfect string of keywords in looking for information on nuanced topics like this. You never know the exact phrases used by authors and researchers, so it's important to diversify your search phrases. Brainstorm and come up with synonyms, alternatives, and related phrases for your top-level keywords. Then it's pretty much a case of mixing and matching keywords and trying several searches that will help capture as much information on your topic as possible. You'll link your keywords and phrases together with what are called Boolean operators. Quite simply, these are just words used to tell databases how you would like to search. For example, the operator AND will give you a narrow search that looks for documents that contain each of the phrases that you use. The operator OR will actually expand your search and works well when using synonyms or related phrases in the same search. For example, a search for yoga and cancer and benefits or effects would search for articles that would contain yoga, cancer, and benefits, as well as a search that would contain results that cover yoga, cancer, and effects. It's almost like doing two and searches at the same time. Once you have nailed down a strategy for deploying search terms, your next step is to find the best place to search. To identify a good database to discover articles and information on your topic, start at library.sc.edu and click on the Articles and Databases link. This will take you to a page where you can start identifying the best places to search. You can identify a subject area that corresponds with your topic, which will lead you to relevant databases. Some good database examples include products like PubMed, Medline, a public health and medicine database, as well as others like PsycInfo, a psychology database, and as well as interdisciplinary databases like Web of Science and Academic Search Complete. The main thing about using interdisciplinary databases will be to remember to take advantage of the limiters built into the databases to help make your searching as efficient as possible. This will make more sense when we demo one of the databases later in this lecture. Academic Search Complete, a large interdisciplinary database that has access to scholarly research articles as well as news and magazine articles, is a great starting point for a large array of topics. Let's look at how well it works for our sample topic. When you click the link to a database, like Academic Search Complete, while off campus, you should be asked to enter your network username and password. Once you do that, you will be able to search the database. Using keywords from our sample topic, I've searched yoga and cancer and benefits. And here is a sample of the results I received. Before going through them, though, it's always a good idea to think about what limiters you can apply that will make sorting and evaluating your search results easy and efficient. No matter what database you are searching within, it's important to be aware of what type of coverage the database provides. In the case of Academic Search Complete, it is a database that provides access to journals, magazines, newspapers, and trade publications, and covers a wide range of disciplines and time periods. So among the options of how you can narrow down your search results, think about the scope of your topic in regards to time period and source types. If you are looking specifically for scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles, you can choose the scholarly peer-reviewed limiter on the left of your results screen. This will limit your results to just articles that are published in journals that go through the peer-review process. 
peer review refers to the evaluation of scientific, academic, or professional work by others working in the same field. So a faculty member in chemical engineering may write a paper about the potential sustainability of nuclear energy, while the best person to review the research methodology and results of such a paper would be other researchers within chemical engineering. So that limiter, which you will see in many of our databases, will exclude any article that wasn't published in a peer-reviewed journal. In this graphic provided by Wiley, one of the larger academic publishers, you can see the painstaking links that are required in the publishing of scholarly research articles. Another scoping element that you will want to consider is time frame. If your topic is very recent, then you will not need any results that will automatically be out of date. In this search, for example, there are results dating back to 1996. If I happen to know or have learned that yoga was not a study technique for relieving symptoms of cancer until, say, the last 10 years, then I could just use the slide rule provided to change the date range from 2007 to 2017. Similarly, pay attention to the source types seen here bordered in yellow. If you were looking for media pieces like magazines or news articles, this would be a good section to use to check just one or two of those specific source types. Once you find an article that looks relevant and helpful to your topic, go ahead and click on the title page. That will take you to a page that looks like this. This is called the item's record page. From here you can find out a lot of helpful information that can help with researching your topic. Whenever you find a good article, make sure to read through the abstract, which will help confirm the article's relevance. But also be sure to pay attention to the subject terms and things like author-supplied keywords. The subject terms, and sometimes you will see things like author-supplied keywords as well, will really help in expanding your set of keywords and other phrases that you can use in your searching. The subject terms listed are especially useful as they are not only used to describe the content of the article here, but are also used to describe other articles with similar content that might also be located in the database. So in short, they are good for helping with making your searching more precise. So for example, one of the subject terms that describes the article is psychological aspects, a phrase that I had not thought of during my brainstorming for keywords. So I could take that and add it to my existing search, maybe in place here of benefits, and do a new search. And then what that will give me is even more precise results that have to do with yoga, cancer, and psychological aspects. And I'll get the same result that I just had, as well as many others that fit within the parameters of that search. So you can see how you can use subject terms and even maybe phrases or concepts that you find within the abstract to give you more ideas for searching. Obviously, once you identify a relevant article, you will want to obtain the full text of that article. Within whatever database you are searching, look for the full text options that are usually displayed as the PDF full text logo, linked full text, or use the full text finder button to locate the article outside of the particular database you were searching. And back to an item's record page for just a moment, as you find things that you definitely want to use, there are tools on the right side of the article's record page that help with managing and citing what you find. Within that toolbar, you will see options to save items directly to a Google Drive, to email yourself items, as well as print and other options that you will want to explore at your leisure. One of these tools that you'll find essential, though, is the Citation tool. If you click the Cite button, you'll get at least an idea of what the citation for the article should look like. So when you click the Cite button, you'll get a list of possible citation styles. The ones you'll most likely use are APA or MLA, whether it be in this class or another one. And what you want to really pay attention to is the individual um, elements such as capitalization and dates, and even EBSCO tells you to pay special attention to personal names, capitalization, and dates. At the end of this lecture, I will show a library research guide that will help with confirming the accuracy of the citations you may find, but at least, at the very least, these citations will give you a starting point and 
give you all the elements for a proper citation of the article that you're wanting to use. In addition to multidisciplinary databases like Academic Search Complete, the library has access to slews of subject-specific databases as well. Depending on your research topic, you may want to consider looking in one of these subject-specific databases. Using our example from yoga as a relief method for cancer patients, we may want to check out the options within public health. Within all the subject areas, the top databases have been curated and are listed first on subject area pages. So according to the librarians at Thomas Cooper Library, PubMed Medline with USC Links is the top database for public health information. So let's start there and see what we can find. So once here, we can search in similar ways as an academic search complete. It doesn't give us the individual boxes, but we can always enter our operators in manually. So I can search yoga and cancer and benefits. And I get many results, about 73. And we even see one that was highlighted in the last lecture about the Tibetan yoga. But within these, I like number three. Role of Yoga in Cancer Patients, Expectations, Benefits, and Risks, a review. And if I find something like that, I can click on it. And I get very similar things. I get an abstract. I get keywords. I even get methodology results and conclusions right here. And then, of course, I have my full text, op text options over on the right, full text finder. This is one that's pretty much freely available so I can click on it and wind up getting straight to the full text without any problems whatsoever. And so just keep in mind that though databases may vary in appearance and mechanics, the ultimate goal for all of them is to connect you with relevant research resources. You just have to practice with each relevant product until you get the hang of searching for and obtaining relevant pieces of information. Once you've gotten a good grasp of what and where you will be searching, then you've covered most of the challenge of secondary research. However, as you embark on such a journey, the library does provide help along the way. If you have questions as you're researching, you can get live online chat help using the Ask a Librarian button that you'll see on the library's homepage. You'll also see this button embedded into several of the databases. So if you see it and have a question, Give us a click and we will be able to answer your question right away. Additionally, the librarians at Thomas Cooper make library guides that help with a slew of needs. You can find them from the library homepage by scrolling down and there's a section titled Library Guides that you can find kind of in the middle. We make them for individual areas of study that work as research guides, pointing you to relevant research resources within areas of study, specific subject areas, but we also make guides that help with specific needs, such as citing sources. So we have subjects and courses, but then if you click on things like special topics, you might find one on citation formats. This guide will provide you with good examples of each citation style so that you can cross-reference any citation that you find that you may have found in a specific database. Or these can also be used to help with building any citation that you need based on the publication information that you gather. And so this concludes this lecture on research strategies. If you have any research questions related to this class, please feel free to email me directly at applingm at mailbox.sc.edu or send your question through your instructor. Thank you.